Let's talk about the bunker game. A lot of people call it the sand trap, but there's no terminology in golf as far as sand trap is concerned. It's called the bunker, okay? And this shot is a terrifying shot for a lot of people. They hate getting in here because they really have a difficult time getting out of it. And one of the more frustrating things for amateurs is you'll hear professionals say it's a very easy shot. And you'll hear amateurs say, yeah, well, that's correct. Not for, not for me, but for them it must be. So what I'm going to try and do here for you right now is show you how to get out of the bunker like a golf professional and give you a little bit more success. See, the key once you're in the bunker, if you look at a couple things, one, you want to get out. Two, you want to get on the green. And three, hopefully you can get close. But for most amateurs, when they get in the bunker here, they're looking at about four shots from this point on to get that ball into that hole. And for professionals, we're only looking at two. So I could stand in this bunker here for probably an hour and discuss many, many ways to do this. But what I'd like to do right now is show you the simplest and the safest way to do this. And I think, you're gonna, I think you'll, it'll be pretty clear what I'm trying to explain to you. I'll go over a couple of mistakes that amateurs make as far as in the bunker, as far as weight distribution and ball position some misconceptions and, and uh, things like that. So now that the camera angle is on me right here, the first thing I like to do when I get in the bunker is check the lie. The lie is going to determine my course of action, whether the ball's sitting up, whether the ball's sitting down, whether it's fried egg, whether the sand's fluffy, whether the sand's packed down hard. It's really, you want to make that your first choice. The next thing you do is give yourself good footing. So you're working your way down into the sand, but remember, you cannot build a platform. So just work your way down into the sand for stability and give yourself a good base. And two, you're testing the text of the sand, whether it's fluffy or it's hard or impacted. Okay? The next thing you want to do is play the ball off your left heel. That's so important. I see so many people put the ball in the middle and the back. The reason why you want the ball off the left heel is because you want 60% of your weight on your left foot if you're a right-handed golfer. Do not ever put your weight on your right foot. That's going to get you in a lot of trouble. There's a lot discussed about where to hit impact the sand. We talk about two inches behind the ball. That is correct. That will be your impact zone if 60% of your weight is on your left foot. If you put the ball back a little and your weight's 50-50, you're going to probably wind up hitting here. And if you move your weight back to your right side, you're probably not going to get to the ball because you're going to hit a very, very fat golf shot. So 60% of your weight left, ball off the left heel. Now as I turn this way towards this flag, you're going to see how I set up for this particular shot. I'm going to open up my body lines, which are my feet, knees, hips, and shoulders, about 25 to 30 degrees left of this flag. I'm going to point my club directly at my intended target, which is this flag right here. Ball's off my left heel, weight's on my left foot. I'm going to open my club face, whether it's a 56 or a 60 degree sand wedge, to determine the height of my shot. Here's another mistake that I see a lot for amateurs. They have their club face square, but they're intending to hit a high golf shot. So on the downswing, they try to make the adjustment and now you're going to have some difficult shots coming from that position. So open the club face at first to determine the height of your shot. On the backswing, I'm going to get the club up rather quickly. So I'm going to hinge the club pretty quickly on the backswing, a lot more than on the other shots around the green. So cock the club up rather quickly. This is mostly a shoulder and hands and arms motion. There's not a lot of motion coming out of the lower body. You start moving your lower body on a bunker shot and you're going to get three shots. An okay shot, a thin shot into the lip, and a fat shot that won't get out. So keep your lower body still. The length of backswing will determine the length of your shot. So you want to go to about 10 o'clock. That's about a 10 o'clock position right here. This is an important area. Make sure that your backswing is smooth because it'll give you a chance to have a smooth downswing. There's no sense of an emergency in the bunker. Don't don't hack at the ball. Just make a smooth swing. And what's really important is try to keep the club face constant throughout. What I mean by that is you see how the club face goes back? It's open, it's still open, and it's still open. One of the common mistakes I see for amateurs is they stop the club in the sand. They take it back and stop. So they hack at the ball. It's important that you accelerate 
but not in a jerky fashion or anything like that. Just make sure it's equal on both sides, smooth on both sides of the ball. Now, I have a 60 degree wedge right here because the, the pin is pretty close to me. So I want this ball coming out soft without a lot of uh, release on it so we can try and get fairly close to that pin. Now, the ball's played off my left heel, my weight's on my left foot, my body lines are aimed left, my club face is aimed directly at the target. I'm going to try and take a smooth swing on both sides of the ball to get this close to the target. And of course it doesn't always work that way, but I don't know whether you can see that, but that, that worked out just well. So let's go over this again. In the bunker, get your ball off your left heel, get your body lines left, get your weight, very important, 60% on your left foot, cock the club up fairly quickly, keep your lower body quiet, accelerate at all times. If you practice this technique, and don't vary from this, I think the anxiety of the bunker will go away for you and you'll start executing better shots.